Oh, guys. I tell you, this Sybil and Lucy, <laughs> <laughs> everything she's about to say to you is, is a lie. driving me up a wall. Nah, how can you drive a pregnant person <laughs> up a wall, really? Honestly? <laughs> So, welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm your co-host, Brandis Daniel. Nice to meet you, Brandis <laughs> Daniel. I'm your co-host, Sybil and Moody. And I hope Sybil's going to be nice to me on this podcast, because before the podcast, she was giving me all kind of grief, so let's see. So did I punch you in the thigh, or did you punch me, (laughs) just so I'm clear? Y'all don't even understand. It gets real over here. But we're so glad you joined us, ladies. We have so much exciting conversation ready for you today, and we hope you're ready to join us. So, what's been going on? You just mentioned you were hungry. How's that whole thing going? Oh, my God. You get hangry? So, okay, so here's the deal, guys. <laughs> Before I became pregnant, I was already very grouchy when I got hungry. <laughs> I'm from Memphis. Like, what do you we want from me? Bed. Right, we right, right, right. And, but this pregnancy thing, it's like on another level. Like, ladies out there who have been pregnant or you're pregnant now, you know, when you're hungry, it's not like I'm hungry 30 minutes from now. It's like I'm hungry now. And that hunger brings out all kind of craziness. So, anywho, after this podcast, I'm going to get me something to eat. Good. <laughs> Good. What you going to get? We're in, we're in Harlem, guys. We're, we're recording live in Harlem world. So, there's yes. all kind of good soul food over here. I don't know. Well, I have to go up to my friend's house. She lives in Westchester. Um, and they're doing a cookout there. So, I'm going to... Nice go there right after this like hopefully they've got some good food there but they they are known for having meat and no sides oh Oh. Oh. (laughs) i might need to stop by the grocery store and bring my own sides can you do that b-y-o-s bring your own sides no sides (laughs) no you're not gonna make it to westchester with this attitude you're gonna rich rich when you get her in the car you swing up by a drive through real quick let her get something to eat i know Oh, Lord, what's been going on with you, Miss Sybil? Oh, today I had, like, I actually had two back-to-back lunches at the same place. Are you serious? <laughs> that just happened to be a lot. Both were paid for. Amen. Nice. Love it. Yes. Love it. But I had lunch with um, a friend of mine who, uh, Seema Alexander, who's an amazing business coach and uh, woman and leader, and she's a Kickstarter in every way, and um, an intern who's actually a girl that I've, seen grow up and she's now at Warden and she's killing it over there. And then I had uh, my second lunch was, uh-huh. or my after lunch, that's what I'm gonna call that one, was with uh, the program director over at Covenant House where I nice. love to volunteer. And yeah, so today was all about me adding value. Oh, great. Yeah. I How can that. I add value? What can I do to help grow the next person as best as possible? So that was that was my morning. And then I got to hook up with your crazy but so. <laughs> but you know what? That, that actually ties in nicely to our topic. It and does. I know that was not the It was not even intentional, but it actually, it, it actually really, is. It really, does. So, I mean, really quickly, just to recap on um, our last podcast, which was absolutely amazing. If you didn't listen, we want to urge you to go back and check out our last podcast where we discussed how to deal with disappointments. And um, the top three things you should do when you're facing disappointment. And Brandis really laid out some very uh, practical steps um, that helped me out for sure. And her homework was to practice those steps and then come to this podcast and let us know how she dealt with the disappointment that she was facing, whether or not her own uh, medicine worked. So Brandis, (sighs) tell us really quickly. Did it work? It's, it's working. It's working. Yes. Good. So what step do you need to um, take advantage of to make it like fully work? You need to put in perspective. You need to forgive. You need to move forward. I, I, th- I need to regroup. You need to regroup. I need to regroup. You probably need to yeah. eat. I need to eat. That hanger is... is I, need to, <laughs> I need to eat. <laughs> that hanger is real. I'm over here punching Sybil in her thigh. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to regroup. That's that's so, short and pregnant for I need to eat and then yeah, it'll be I need, okay. I need to regroup. No, but that's awesome. And and we got some really great uh, feedback from listeners who have dealt with their own disappointment. Yeah, thank and, you guys yes. so much for letting us into your world. Yes, and I think people agree with you about putting things in perspective and really figuring out how to respond, if any way. That was yeah. a big takeaway that I felt was strong and resonated with, with all of our great girlfriends. So anyway, back into today, 
We're gonna be discussing how to build valuable business relationships. I mean, a lot of the things, Brandis, you know, a lot of the things that you do to build your personal relationships spill over into your business, but I think from an entrepreneurial uh, standpoint, we need to really help our young girlfriends understand how to kickstart the right relationships, to target the right people, how to, how to make those relationships grow and be valuable, mm -hmm. and how to keep them you know, as lifelong relationships. Absolutely. And I mean, you do it well, girl. You know what? I have, I started from scratch. And so I had to build relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, coming from Memphis, moving to New York, not knowing really anyone here. Yeah. Um, and starting a business. I didn't have any relationships, so mm -hmm. I really had to start from the ground up and kind of figure out how do I be creative to even get these people's attention. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's true. I mean, I, I think mean, that you built incredible yeah. relationships that we just spoke about. We, yeah, and it was a it was a long uh, road to me discovering how to do it my way, right? Because I was building relationships the way everyone else said, and then honestly, you and I come from you know, a different era right? <laughs> where right. you were building relationships door by door, handshaking, physically going out and connecting with people. Yes. So, you know, we have, we've had to go from that and moving into digital where our millennials sit and everything's on social and you're connecting and building businesses off of social and websites Absolutely. and, you know, Facebook. And that's something that that adaptation was something that we really had to move into yeah. so that we can keep ourselves connected and relevant and understand how to reach people the right way. Um, and, and, you know, for me, this topic is very important right now because, um, I built a lot of relationships under the umbrella of a company that I was with for so long. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of those relationships, you know, as I left that company, I wasn't sure where those relationships would go. Got it. And it felt like, I felt like a kid almost like I'm starting brand new in the business world with my own name, my own entity, my own identity. And, but I don't, know, think, I don't think the relationships are cut off, though. I think, yeah, I, think I, I agree. You, yeah, I think when you build real relationships, I don't care what company you're at. That person don't care what company you're at either. Like those yeah. relationships. That's why that's people go. Discovered. That's why people follow people from company to company because yeah. it's about the person, not the company. Yeah. So. But it's a scary space not knowing for sure until someone calls or emails and you're like, yes, <laughs> we still cool. I still yeah. got that relationship that I worked really hard to build. Right. And yeah, so. But and Sybil guys have amazing relationships. Oh, I mean, you. when I think about where I'm going next in my life and my career, I'm going to be looking to her to Aww. give me some advice on how do you build a relationship with billionaires? Because mm -hmm. I don't have any billionaires um, mm -hmm. in my corner or that I know personally, but Sybil does. Ah. And so <laughs> you make me sound like a baller. Well, girl. you do, you do, you know, plenty of billionaires <laughs> and billionaires. And, um, and that's, that's where I want to go. And so you've been able to build those relationships, which I think is incredible. It is. It's been good. And I think for all of you that live in the digital world, um, you, you guys might not like what I'm going to say right now, but when you live in that digital space, all of our millennial friends and family out there, it's very easy to get comfortable with the distance that you can create. You create social connectivity online, but being able to do things in a very tactical, tangible way where you can network in the right way and build relationships that are sustainable and stick, and also build relationships across generations where yeah. if you want to get a relationship with a great mentor, someone who is an executive at a level you aspire to get to, it may not happen on social. You might have to go to coffee and you might have to, you know, really go send a note and actually do some of those old, what, what people would consider old school yes. tactics to, to catch their attention. Yeah. And I will never forget, Brandis, when you were um, in the early years of HFR and you were targeting, oh, we got to get, I'm, I don't want to get off topic here, but I remember some of the tactics that you used oh, to target absolutely. a specific woman who has now been in your corner for like seven or eight years now yeah. and um, has been very instrumental in helping you to grow your brand. Yeah. So, you know, we're about to dive into this right now, but ladies, I think you'll understand, you know, building these business relationships, you know, is about having people in your corner that can re represent you and support you no matter, like you said, no matter what company you're at, but represent your caliber of a woman, your character, your value, and whatever it is that you're building, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what kind of, 
I guess, relationships right now do you think our audience might be struggling with or trying to figure out, like, how to build valuable relationships, um, you know, I guess, in their lives at this point? That's a great question. Um, Some of the feedback and conversation that I've been hearing from our audience, you girlfriends out there, about building business relationships is how do you even start them? How do you... How do you um, reach a person that you aspire to know without being, you know, shaky, nervous, right, intimidated? Right, right. Um, how do you say the right thing? Because mm-hmm. people get, you know, stuttery. They see, they, I, listen, y'all, I've been in public and people have seen Brandis and, and, and one girl told me how she, I, oh my God, I followed her. I followed her on social and she was so, and she said for years she watched. Am I lying? You Am are, I lying? You a photographer. Really- Am I lying? You're not allowed. Okay. She watched for years and she waited and prepped for the right moment to approach Brandis to make sure that she was prepared because she knew that Brandis was a certain caliber of woman. So it let me know and, and it let Brandis let you know that a lot of times people are so intimidated by the stature of a person or the stat or you know, or the Which inferiority. Is so crazy to Isn't me. Crazy? Because anybody who knows me know that I am the most approachable person ever. Know, or at least I think I she am. She was watching you from social. <laughs> yes. And from that's true. social, she built this idea of the type of woman that you are. That's true. And, you know, and that happens a lot. Yeah. No, I it agree. Happens a lot. I think, too, um, a lot of women out there who are looking for mentors and mm-hmm. who are for looking for people who can guide them mm-hmm. and trying to figure out, like, how do I actually approach that particular woman mm-hmm. or that man? Um, mm-hmm. I think that's a concern for some of our listeners out there as they're kind of building their businesses and as they're kind of rising the ranks in corporate, they're trying to figure out like, how do I have someone who can help to guide me and take me to the next level? Yes. I wanted to, Brandis, talk to you a little bit about, you know, as you're establishing a relationship, as you're identifying, you know, where you want to go and, and who you want to speak to, how do you establish yourself as a person that people would even want to know? Mm, that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you. I'll tell you how I've done it. Okay. Right. So when I first started Harlem's Fashion Row, um, no one knew who I was. Mm-hmm. You put the name Harlem and Fashion together, and people are already side eyeing me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and and not that like Harlem is not a fashionable place. It's it's a a, a really fashionable place. Mm-hmm. But you're talking well, not at that time eight years ago. Yeah, you know Harlem didn't have the cachet that it has today. Mm-hmm. I hate the word cachet. Well, Why did I just a, say that's that? A, a but it did not word. have the cachet that it has today. <laughs> so you put those things together, and people have all kind of thoughts running through their heads. Yeah. and um. The way that I built relationships was I really targeted specific people. Mm -hmm. So I had like four people on my hit list every year. Mm -hmm. And it was like, these are the four people that I want to build relationships with in fashion. Mm -hmm. And the way that I figured out who those people were, they were people I had read about in magazines. They were people who I knew were very influential in Mm -hmm. fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, They were people who I knew were highly respected in this industry. Mm -hmm. And my biggest thing is always, I want to do something that nobody else is going to do. So like and 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 what's funny is that's so easy to do because everybody does the same thing they yeah. send you an email yeah yeah and so it's really quite easy to mm-hmm. stand out um but, but what do you say in that subject line i don't I, so i usually do send a initial email introduction just want to introduce myself right okay. in the subject line it's like um introduction to harlan's fashion row or um, hi, so and so. I always try to put the person's name in the subject, great, so that they know that it's not like some yeah. general email. It's so personal. I would say, "Hi, Sybil, would like to introduce you to HFR," mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then I'll introduce myself in the email. But that to me is like, I don't even consider that like my real introduction. Mm-hmm. That's like baseline for me. Mm-hmm. And then I would do something very specific for that person. So I would find out when their birthday was. I would find out what their favorite color is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would do different things. So, for example, um, Audrey Smaltz was my very first advisory board member. Mm-hmm. But she didn't know me. Mm-hmm. And so I remember introducing myself to her and, um, and you know, she was kind of like, you know, really nice to me, but at the same time, like she didn't know me. 
but she was very nice and very open. Mm -hmm. And I wanted her to come to my very first fashion show. Well, she couldn't come because she was, she said she had a board meeting that night, a condo board meeting. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know she was just blowing me off or not. So I was like, okay, I really want, I need this woman to be at this fashion show. So I sent flowers. I sent Mm -hmm. her these beautiful Mm -hmm. flowers. And the flowers was like, I hope you reconsider coming to the fashion show. And so she did not come still because she did have a board meeting officially. <laughs> <laughs> but she sent somebody from her office to come. Wow. And so they yeah. came and they were able to report back to her. But what I did was every single year on her birthday, I figured out that her favorite color was yellow. I sent her yellow flowers every Love year. It. During Christmas time, I sent her something for Christmas every single year. She was like that person who I was like, this is somebody who I'm going to sew into. And when I asked her to be on my advisory board, I was working a job. So I did have some money, but I pulled out all the stops. I sent her car service to go pick her up, to take her this. back. Yes. Like, all of that. <laughs> like, it was because I was just like, you know, it's worth the $200. Yeah. If you would have wrapped it into, like, one line, how do you think you established yourself as someone she would want to know? I made myself someone who was very difficult to ignore. Great. Oh, my goodness, girlfriends. Did you hear that? <laughs> Oh, my my drop on the girlfriend, Brandis. Make yourself someone that is difficult to ignore. Listen, that's going to, let me tell you some pocket that now, because that's going to help you when you're dating. That's going to help you when you're trying to get a job. That's going to help you when you're making friendships. That's going to help you in every realm. She said, dang, this girl got me down to the color of the flowers. How'd she know my birthday? <laughs> Because this was pre-social, y'all. Social wasn't popping like that. Right. It was like, no, I and it. she wasn't on social. No. So, yeah. So, well, that's great then because all of you girls who are living on social, that information is so accessible these days. And now you can, I mean, I would Insta-stalk. I would get on Instagram. Don't stalk to the point of, like, getting a charge. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> exactly. Let me change that. I wouldn't Insta-stalk. I would Insta-study. 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 <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Lay it on them. <laughs> you need to insta study. I love yes. that. Get on there and study. Find out what people's heartbeat really ties to. And for you, you figured out her birthday, her roses. You knew she needed car service. You you were able to hone in on the type of woman, the elegance, the aura of her. Mm-hmm. That's where you met her, and it made it difficult to ignore you, girl. Very difficult to ignore. Oh my gosh, I love that. So ladies, and you can even hashtag that, if you are Insta-studying, you want to really get into that detail, right? Absolutely. So that means you have to be outstanding. You have to do something. can't be like everyone else. You have to do something that that someone else won't do. Yeah, and willing to go far. Yeah, and people, um, you know, they send one email and they say, I never heard back from Mm -hmm. them. And that's it. And I even tell my interns, I'm like, Mm -hmm. you guys have to understand they are getting tons yeah, of emails yeah. a day. So this email from this person that they don't know coming through, it is like the last on the list. Yeah, yeah. I'll say in honesty, I've had people to email me, you know, cold about a job or internship. And I saw it and I read it and mentally I responded. You mentally <laughs> responded. I do the same and, you know, thing. Because it's not that I didn't take interest in that person or really admire the fact that they said it. Like you said, on, on the list of my priorities, that was not top. But when they follow up and when they hit my inbox early in the morning, when they're first on my inbox, right. then I'm on it because it reminds me of the thing. So like you said, I tell my interns, I have one who says, you know, they never follow up. I mean, they never um, email me back. And I say, you never followed up either. You have to follow up follow, is serious. Follow up is everything. Hello? If it was a check... Follow you will up follow up to get that check. Follow up is everything, yeah. guys. Follow up is everything. I used to make it a rule when I would get business cards uh, when I first started my business. And I am going to start back doing this. I have just committed myself to okay. this. But when I st- used to get business cards, I would immediately send that person a card. Yeah. Like yeah. a note card. Oh, I do. I do. Girl, because no one it sends no cards the, anymore. It makes all the difference. And, and please take note, ladies. This We're not talking email. We're no, talking no, no. a physical, physical card, card to their actual office or home or whatever address they have, they've sent you. But sending them an actual note card, handwritten, yes. like with a pen. Yes. That says thank you, and it was a pleasure to meet. I do it and every time. And put your business card in there. Get it? Yes. 
I'm telling you, <laughs> you better you better school me real quick. So make yourself difficult to ignore, and then you have to follow up, and you do follow up follow up in a way that is very unique to the market, meaning. You know, no one's sending no cards. Everyone's emailing or texting. Shame on you for texting a new... And Instagramming. A new... <laughs> Instagram Shame on you. Is, uh, writing Shame. a comment on Instagram is not Shame. follow up. Not follow up. Consider that a failure if that's your, <laughs> if that's your <laughs> means of following up. It is about getting intimate, personal, and direct. Yeah. It is. Very, I think we should do something on chic follow-up. Yeah. It's like, it's because like how the do note you card is important. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with women, I would say, especially with women. So tell me this. When you're looking to establish these new relationships, like you did with Miss Audrey, how did you know who to target? I think you should target people you want to sit at the table with. But how do you know you want to sit at the so, table with them? So, because these women were at a place where I wanted to be. Okay. So they were, you know, well established in fashion. She had already had a fashion show production company. Mm -hmm. I knew the relationships that she had and how well respected she was and what her word meant in the mm -hmm. industry, right? Mm -hmm. And the influence that her word had in the industry. So, you know, we all have this aspiration of being invited to a certain dinner table. Absolutely. Right? So there is always a dinner table <laughs> that, you know, you see something on Instagram, you see a dinner going on, you're yeah. like, dang it, I wish I, I was invited right in that to chair. that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, and I still have that. Like, you yeah. see certain things going on, you're like, dang it, I wish I was in that room. Yeah. Or I wish somebody had invited me to that event. Mm -hmm. Those are the people you build relationships with, the people who you want to sit at the table with, the people who you want if you want to be invited to that particular dinner yeah and usually that's aspirational absolutely right? you build relationships with those people that you want to sit at the table with um you know when we had to do groundwork we would be out networking and we you know kind of get a sense of who was doing what and we studied in magazines right and you know i would study in like industry magazines like an entrepreneur yeah, you know definitely. fast ink or if it was fashion magazine. absolutely essence yes and um vogue and harper's bazaar and yeah. i would go down the media page and i would take the names of the people wow. that had positions that were interesting to me. Wow. I re yeah, I would. And I mean, this is how, listen y'all, when I say you gotta be targeted, like I yeah. I think you really gotta go in. I would take those names from that page and I would look at the, the email hanger to understand, to get the convention for the email. Mm -hmm. And I would take their first name or last name or I would call and I would say, I'm trying to reach so-and-so and I, I lost their email. Do you mind giving me their email address? And most of the time, they someone would give you an email address. Yeah. And once you get one email address, you pretty much have whoever else you need to find at that point. Because they're all targeted. They're, they're all, the, all same. the same. So, I mean, that targeting, like you said, is very important to kind of have an aspirational list. I would write down, like, who are the people? What outlet? You know, what my outcomes were from that relationship. I, that is really, really great. And visibly like look at that but make sure i think it's important to make sure when you see yourself at a table to know why you're there oh yeah you know what i was just thinking that i said dang it you know what some people might want to be at a table just because they want just to take a, a kiki they wanna, with the right they people they want to take a photo with them <laughs> yeah. not that kind of table guys. yeah i'm not talking about a table you know, with Kim Kardashian, and unless you want to do some as business a fan. with her yeah. as a fan, no. I'm, not, I'm on a table that you want to be at as a fan, yeah. or you, I'm talking about a table you want to be at as an equal. Yes, where you aspire to be at as an equal. That's the table. That's what you listen, go for. I'm never feeding you before another <laughs> podcast. You gonna be hangry from this day forward. <laughs> you. <so> <laughs> Exactly. An equal. Yes. So a table where you want to sit across, look Kim in the eye if it's Kim or whoever it is, laugh with her as an equal. Right. Be able to pull cards as an equal on that on that uh, meal at Mr. Chow or wherever you are. Absolutely. And be able to exchange from as thought leader to thought leader. Yes. I love that. That is so true. So it's, it's important to assess your motives when you're targeting. Absolutely. Make sure that it's not just about being a fan, right? But being or getting that Instagram photo. Yeah. But that you're elevating yourself as an equal so that you can create outcomes that are going to help each other. Okay. So you establish yourself as someone that people want to know. Mm -hmm. And you do that by making yourself difficult to ignore. Right. And then from there, you're targeting. You're being very specific about your outcome so that you can establish yourself as an equal but how do you know when to activate these relationships? Meaning, how do you know when to call on your relationships and for what? You know, 
I've learned through some valleys and some mountains, so I want to know. <laughs> you know what? I believe in giving way more than I ask. Yeah. I actually heard this in a book, so I, I can't even take credit for this. I forgot. He called it, like, I think, Jab, 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 Punch in this social media book. I can't mm-hmm. even think of the name mm-hmm. of it. But I'm like, give, 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 ask. Yes. Give, yes. Give, 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 ask. Okay, come on, ladies. Like, give, 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 ask. Do it with us. Give, 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 ask. Boom. It's like you know you wanna you want to pour into these mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Like you want them. You want to have so much favor built up mm-hmm. that by the time you ask for a favor, they are bending over backwards to figure out how do I help you. Yeah. Because yeah. you've given and you've given and you've poured and you've poured and you've poured. And I think that's sometimes where it can go awry when you build a relationship and immediately upon building that relationship, you ask. Yeah. So example, um, one of my interns recently met this really powerful woman at Black Enterprise. Okay. I wanted her to learn from her own mistakes, so I didn't stop her. But what she did was she asked this woman for her tea. Well, that's a big ask. That's huge. When you're, that's when you're, time. When you're going to a huge executive who's very busy, who's very well connected, a really important person. We're all important, so I was very hesitant to say that word. And asking them for physical time, time. Yep. that's a huge ask. Mm-hmm. And I don't mm-hmm. think she realized that, but I wanted her to learn that lesson on her own. Mm-hmm. So she said, so the lady sent her the most beautiful response. The most beautiful response. Awesome. Basically, it was like, no, I'm not meeting you in person. But I really appreciate your assertiveness and like all this stuff. So it was a really great email. But what I told her was, what do you do in response to that is now you knock her socks off. Yeah, yeah. So you have found out in that letter, she said, you know, I really love tea. So I said, this is Mm -hmm. your opportunity Mm -hmm. to actually now pour into this woman Mm -hmm. monthly even. Mm -hmm. You know, you can discover new teas. teas. Absolutely. So now you have her address. All you have to do is look up Black Enterprise Corporate Office. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now you send this woman tea. Mm-hmm. You can send her tea once a month, once a quarter with a cute note. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you she will never forget you. Yeah. And at some point, she's going to be asking you, let's just go out for tea. Yeah. Because yeah. you're going to wear her yeah. down. Absolutely. She can't ignore yeah. that. So do you think that in terms of activating people or being able to call on them, is it when you've decided that there is a need for them on your end, meaning you've done all the giving that you think you're capable of doing and you you feel like there's a place where you could plug them in? Or is it something where you just wait on them to ask you? What do you think? You know, some, me, some people will ask. Some for, people will say, what can I do for you? Yeah. Most won't. Well, for me personally, building the relationship, even though I know eventually there will be some kind of way that this person can pour into me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I don't approach it that way, though. I literally approach it like, this is somebody I want a relationship with, so I'm just going to pour into them. And yeah. whenever the time is right mm-hmm. for them to do something for me, it's right, mm-hmm. but... I just want them to know my name. Yeah. Right? I want them to be aware of me Mm -hmm. and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like whatever else comes from it will happen organically. But I don't usually go into it with the preconceived notion of an ask or something I'm going to ask them for. What we deal with now is that patience is very important. Patience is so important. Yeah, because we're talking about really connecting with people who are at um, a different level than we are, maybe a more progressive level in career or whatever that be. But they have full calendars. More than likely, they have children. They have, you know, a lot of social and a lot of philanthropic activities. They have Mm -hmm. a full life. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they don't see you. It's that their eyes are very focused on what it is they're actually doing. Absolutely. So being patient in that process is key because... At some point, if you continue, like you said, with the teas and with the with you know with the notes and with the, just the literally giving part of it, there won't even be a need for an ask. There won't be a need for an yeah. ask. And it's so funny because somebody who you and I both know, I remember when I first met her, and she was a she is a very powerful, powerful woman in PR. When I met her, she asked me point blank. Funny. What do you want from me? Uh huh. And I said nothing, and she did not believe me. Yeah. And I will tell you, for years, I can't think of one thing I've asked her for. Yeah. And it's been probably five years. And what's funny it's is she's been she longer just, than that. It's been longer than that. 
Yeah. And every year, you know, I try to make sure I do something for her birthday. This mm-hmm. year I missed it and I'm so sorry. But but I try to make sure I always do something for her birthday. Mm-hmm. I try to make sure I do something like during the year to pour into her. But I had never had to ask. She asked me the mm-hmm. other day, Brandis, has Essence ever done a feature on you? And I said, no, they haven't ever done a feature on me. She said, send me a pitch letter. I'm going to get it through. Literally, this has been six yeah. years of yeah. this relationship. I've never asked really her for anything because yeah. my point was to build a relationship with her. Yeah. And if I need advice, I can call her. But honestly, I really, she's just somebody who I want in my corner. But let's, let's actually, this is a, this will be fun to, for you guys. We're going to back into how that all happened that day at Amy oh, Ruth's. Wow. <laughs> so if you listen to episode one of our podcast, you learned about how Brandis and I met each other at, a, at an event and uh, we built a relationship and we were talking about what she was doing and what she was growing. And she was talking about the people that she wanted to meet. And that was this particular woman that I happened to have a close relationship with. And so what was interesting was that Brandis and I were having a uh, brunch one Saturday at Amy Ruth. Um, in Harlem and the woman happened to call me because she was in the area and I lived in Harlem at the time and I said oh my goodness you have to come by because I'm with the young lady Brandis that is that you know um, was connecting with you so I think it was very interesting because you were organically building a relationship with me while also having your targeted list of uh, those influencers that you want to connect with, and you never know which relationships will be a bridge. You never know. You never know. You so never you can't know. leave any one of them void of that potential. You have to always, you know, know when to plug in. And I think it's good to be honest about what your goals are, what your outcomes are, especially if you're with an equal. Yeah. And because Brandis and I consider each other equals, it's fair for us to have those conversations where I'm saying, girl, these are my, this is my list. These are my goals. And Brandis can open up and say, oh my gosh, I have a contact for that. Let me put together an email or, oh my gosh, I have this. And I just think that part is very important because you are already activating one relationship I, yes, while was, targeting another. Which was so interesting. And yes. then they end up coming together. And they together. came together full circle. And, and and this particular woman was somebody who, don't kill me if you hear this uh, podcast. <laughs> if she listens to this podcast, she might kill me later because she'll know I'm talking about her. But uh, she's very adverse yeah. to strangers yes. approaching yes. her. Well, in imagine way, how right? nervous I felt telling her, you know, like, come my Amy Ruth. Yeah. She's going to slice my head off. She is very adverse. <laughs> so when when I was, I didn't know that. So what I, I did was I asked, this, I asked her out for lunch. Uh huh. Do you think she was going to go to lunch no. with me? Heck no. <laughs> but that was interesting when she got that text and that yeah. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what's funny though, Sib, is after that, what I did was when she wouldn't go to lunch with me, I sent lunch to her office. Mm. It cost me a hundred dollars, uh-huh. which which was was a lot back in that moment. But but me, I was working, yeah. So I would go spend a hundred dollars yeah. on like Mac products. So what's the big deal? So I spent a hundred dollars and I sent lunch for six people to her office, like Great. the wraps and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I and the note said, since you won't have lunch with me, I'm sending lunch to you. So she had emailed me back. So we had that kind of exchange uh-huh. going on. So by the time you. Eat, hit her oh, up. That, she yeah, was that, primed. <laughs> she was like, okay, who in the I gotta heck meet is her. this Brandis? Because that's what she said. Who the hell is this Brandis? <laughs> yes. Verbatim. Yes. That, that, that's how she rolls. And that's what she said. But sure enough, she understands now who this Brandis is and why. Yeah. So, I mean, I think for for what we need as, as like a start to how, the, how to build these relationships, um, how to build valuable relationships, you know, the number one thing that you said was make it difficult, make yourself difficult to ignore. That was first about establishing yourself as someone that people would even want to know. And then when we talked about targeting, um, who do you target when you're looking for new relationships? Right. You know, and you want to, you, you want to target people that you want to sit at the table with as equals. Equals, being yeah. an equal. And then, you know, how to know when to activate those, those relationships. I mean, my big takeaway from that was to, to continue to give, um, with minimal expectation, except for wanting them to know your name, like yeah. being at peace with that. And I think one of the major pieces that we, um, that we will probably both agree on is do your homework. Yes. Do your homework. As you're yes. making that list of people that um, you desire to uh, to align with on some level around their mission, around your mission, do your homework around who they are, you know, what, what type of philanthropic work they do, 
you know, who their kids are, what colors they tend to wear a lot, yes. what type of jewelry. Yes. Get yourself, like, intimately do that Insta-study, yes. right? So you can target them in a way that makes you difficult to ignore. Absolutely. Yeah. If you don't do your homework, you will get stacked in that junk mail yeah. like everyone else. And I want to give our ladies some homework. Oh, that's good. I want to hear back from them. Like, this topic, like, excites me like no other. Yeah. And so I want to hear from you guys. I want you to think of just one person Mm. that you want to target. Yes. And I want you guys to do something this week you do that makes you difficult to ignore. Oh, that's great. And I want you guys to report back to us on, like, the Facebook page or tweet us or put it on our Instagram on what you did and what the result was from that. Absolutely. That I love that idea. I want to hear. Oh we want to hear back. That's great. We want to hear back. And we should. You know I have, what we I should have do? a person on my list. We should. Here's what we're gonna do, Sybil. What are we gonna? I'm do? putting Sybil on the spot, Uh-oh. y'all. Oh, <laughs> the person who comes back with the best story. I'm gonna personally invite you to Harlem's Fashion Row Fashion Show during New York Fashion Week. Nice. To come with a girlfriend, and this is an invite only event, and I will make sure that you have a seat. I love it. That's so awesome. So that that's what we're going to do. I love it. I, I want, love it. I want, so you guys come back to us with your stories. We cannot wait to hear them. No, yeah, we need And then that. when you get into town in New York now, we're not buying your plane ticket and we're not nope, paying nope, for your nope. hotel room. <laughs> However, we will we will meet you when you get here. So well, I think we should do lunch or dinner with them love when they it. get here. Yeah. And, and you'll be sitting down at a New York Fashion Week show. I would love it to. I would love to sit next to one of our new girlfriends. Let's I mean, how do about it. You? Let's do it. That is awesome. I'm so excited about and this. And I put that. I just put Sybil on the spot with that one. I it just came to my head. I'm like, <laughs> but that's we great. need to hear this. Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah. And also, you never know as you're connecting with people on our Facebook page. You never know who is on that page, and you no. never know what what influencer or what future equal is out there that's watching and, and paying attention to what you're saying or doing. So please, by all means, log on to the Great Girlfriends Facebook page and put your post about who you'd like to meet and, and why, that outcome that you want to create with your equal, right? Yeah, absolutely. I love it. All right. So last but not least, we want to thank you listeners. Thank you guys so much. Yes. We love our girlfriends. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love all the responses that you've been sending to us over email. We love all of Facebook posts. And we just love the conversations that we've been having. And hopefully you've been enjoying us. And we're going to ask that you guys please do share this with your girlfriends. I mean, why would you want to keep this podcast from anyone? Come on yeah, now. Don't be a stingy great girlfriend. <laughs> You're not a great girlfriend if you're being stingy. Share the podcast. And last but not least... You know, let us know what you want to hear. Go on that Facebook page, ask questions. We're, we're happy to record anything around any topic and, and give you whatever we have as ours. But I, we can't close this out without thanking the most amazing all-star husbands and family. I thank you, Rich. That's right. Thank you so much for being there, for supporting me. I love you so much. (laughs) Thank you to my family, to my mom and my dad, who are absolutely incredible. My dad is... um, is just my dad had a stroke last year and he's getting better every single day um so i'm just so grateful i'm gonna see them on monday tuesday actually so i'm excited to come home and Uh and see them but Uh yeah thank you to our families yes thank you kwaku i love you and my sam and my dilly and my mom and dad and sisters and brothers and family and cousins uncles aunties everybody (laughs) around the world thank you and keep being great great girlfriends. girlfriends yes we are signing off 